G'day comrades subscribers. Uh, Commodore VIC-20. Haven't worked on one of these for a while. Uh, yeah, thanks to PCB Way, by the way, for um, sponsoring this video and, and helping me out. They've been a great, great friend of the channel. Um, purpose of this video is that um, I wanted to have some way to replace the internal RAM of these um, early, what we call the two prong machines, so the nine volt only machines. Um, I wanted, I've wanted to do that for a, for a few reasons. Let's just get the keyboard out of the way. So I've, I have done a couple of basic things on this machine um, well, ages ago. I've replaced the sockets for the ROMs, I've replaced the linear regulator, and I think I've replaced the electrolytics, I think. But that's that's about it. Because um, there are a, a lot of ways you can reduce the power draw, which in turn reduces the excess or the waste heat that it generates. So at the moment, at 9 volts DC, it's drawing just over 1 amp, 1.06 amps. So we, we can reduce that in a few ways. Like I've already replaced the linear regulator. So that, that's um, that's one easy way of doing it. I'm uh, replacing the 6522 uh, VIAs with um, the CMOS version, 65C22. They are just drop-in replacements. That's a very simple way to um, to reduce heat as well. They, they run a lot cooler. Um, you can replace the ROMs with EPROMs. Um, need a converter board though. But that reduces heat quite a lot as well. Uh, so we've got the character ROM here. We've got the um, I think this is the that's basic and that's the kernel. Uh, this is a PAL machine, by the way. You can tell by it. So we've got a 6561. But one other way that I've wanted to look at is replacing the internal RAM. So we've got half K chips here, and we've got uh, five, let's say five and a half, um, five and a half in total. So we've got uh, 1K, 2K, 3K, 4K, 5K, and 5.5K. So we've got half a K for color RAM, and then we've got 5K um, for, for actual RAM, which um, turns out to be about 3.5K usable. So this um, the VIC-20's memory is organized in blocks of 8K. So this is referred to as block 0, um, the first block. And um, there is actually, so you know, we've got 5k, so there's obviously 3k missing. There's actually a 3k hole uh, around 1, 2, and 3. And that's actually what the, uh, let me just grab it. So what that's what the 3k RAM cartridge or the, the Super Expander um, fills in. So they fill in the, um, basically the block zero. And um, yeah, but I've, I've wanted to have some way to just be able to replace this just in case if there's a faulty chip, you know, it's hard to get replacements for these. Um, they're not efficient, you know, they obviously waste waste power. And um, I, was, I was also want to just understand how it kind of works. So um, thanks to PCB Way you know, sponsoring the video. So I've designed this internal RAM board here. So uh, we've got an 8K SRAM chip and we've got a GAL here for the logic. And then this is basically where it's going to go in the board. And then we've got some header pins here and um, uh, header pins for switches. So we need some additional signals and uh, a switch there. So if you want to switch off the additional 3K. So this basically fills up block zero for you. So it'll be the same as having having one of the, well, maybe without the super expander part, ROM, but it'll be the same as having a 3K RAM cartridge built in. Um, so you see, I do basically. If, if this is faulty, then you can just replace it with this. So the idea is that you pull out these RAM chips, and then you put a socket for, say, for these two. It doesn't really matter which two, actually, because you pick up the same signals, I guess. And then you can just stick it in there, and um, yeah, that's your RAM replaced. Oh, that's that's the idea anyway. Okay, that took a while, but I've got all ten of the RAM chips off. I might look at um, doing a second way, probably just removing these two chips here and then leaving the others in and maybe just disconnecting their power power pins rather than having to dis, um, desolder all of them. But the next thing to do is to put two sockets on here 
and then um, solder up the board so that it will fit in. Hopefully, I measured, 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 so hopefully it matches up. Let's see. All right, so I've got the new sockets in, and I've got the, um, the pins in, the uh, turned pins. Now, let's see. Make sure that this will fit on, hopefully. I measured it, re-measured it. Um, there's one side. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, perfect. There we go. I got the measurements right. All right, so I'll solder that on and then solder those on, program the gal, and fingers crossed, I guess. Okay, we've got everything ready to go. Got it installed. I've programmed the PLD. Let's, uh, is that light, lighting better? Anyway, all right, so let's get the. Okay, power supply is ready. Start recording. And turn the power on. <laughs> well, there's a flashing cursor. So it's kind of working. <laughs> uh, let's plug the keyboard in. No, it goes in this way. Just plug it in, see if we can type something. Yeah, we can type. Let's see if I can do a program. Um, print test space semicolon. Okay, 20, go to 10, and then run. No, right, run. Okay, I must have made an error. <laughs> so it's interesting that the first first column is like kind of an almost an asterisk. I've obviously screwed up the chip select. <laughs> Maybe it's interfering with the character ROM. Okay, let's stop recording that. All right, let's um, let's have a fiddle with the chip select uh, logic. Okay, um, no idea how I'm going to edit this, <laughs> but I've spent all day trying to figure out how to get this working. And well, I could get the, I could get it to replace the uh, the base five kilobytes, so three and a half, three and a half k available to basic. I could get that to work, but I couldn't get the extra three k expansion to work on it. And I was scratching my head, and then I realised what was going on. So I think it might be easier if we have a look at this schematic. Let me just, I think it might capture, do a screen capture, I think. Let me just start. Oh. But it works. <laughs> um, well, BASIC is reporting the correct amount of RAM, 3.5K or 6.5K. So let me just quickly do a screen capture. Uh, record entire screen. Yeah, that'll do. Um, yep. All right, so um, let, what we so this is the RAM, the twenty-one forty. So I've replaced all that, and then we've got this uh, decoder here, seven four LS one three A, the RAM decoder. So you can see we've got A ten, A eleven, A twelve, and then we've got two enable pins. So A thirteen. Um, so when A thirteen is high it's enabled and then we've got this G2A which basically I've called block zero kind of you come down here to this other decoder and um, you can see here it's basically it's a, the block decoder so block zero so that's basically the block zero so that's active low so when block zero is low and A13 is high this is enabled and and then we've got the A10, A11, A12 and you can see here we've got the output so we've got zero uh, and that's the first two chips and then we've got ram one ram two ram three you can see come down here over to this nand gate ram one ram two one ram three and then we've got the rest of the 
RAM here, <clears throat> over here. So I thought, well, come on, I've, this should work because I'm allowed. So I, I, I just basically allowed everything, you know, even these ones, and it still wasn't working. So then I had a look. And, so then I just stuck the cartridge in, the um, like the 3K RAM cartridge. Just stuck the 3K RAM cartridge in, and, and it worked. So then I had a look at the cartridge, and I realized up here we've got a cartridge read write and then we've got this V read write uh, Vic I don't know and I kind of realized that yes yeah, so this cartridge read write is connected to the RAM on the cartridge whereas this V read write is connected to the RAM inside the Vic so I thought oh okay so maybe that's the problem um, but then I looked closer and said okay the data bus is C, CD0 to CD7. And over here you can see we've got CD0 to CD7 um, going into the CPU. And then we've got B, D, uh, BD0 to BD7 whoops, coming out of the internal RAM. So how, do they, how does the B data bus connect to the C data bus? It's via this transceiver up here. So we've got B0, BD0 to BD7, and then uh, C, well, whatever. So that's that was the one there. And um, I realized if you have a look at the enable pin, you follow the enable pin down, all the way down here, over to here, it comes out of this NAND gate. So this 13 input NAND gate, basically, if there's any... Um, if there's any values that are low, then it outputs a high. So obviously if it's high, then the this transceiver is going to be disabled. So basically the buses are not connected to each other. And the direction is just whether we're reading or writing from the CPU, I guess. But the key is that the buses are disconnected when, when this is high. And that goes high when RAM 1, 2 and 3 are asserted so when they go low then so it doesn't matter what I'm doing this is all, always going to disconnect my my internal RAM from the CPU so what I've done is I've just basically ripped this chip out <laughs> and replaced it with my peer basically my PLDs logic um, so that because um, I've got a switch I've got a switch let me just stop this um, video capture Right, so I've got a I've got a switch. Let's have a closer look. So I've got a switch there, so I can switch the inter I can switch the um, between the base three and a half k or the full six and a half k, or should say five k and eight k. So I can switch it on and off. Um, so there's the seven four LS one three eight that I've removed, and you can see here I've got some additional wiring that I had to add in underneath my board. So revision B will have some extra wires up here, or maybe I'll just extend extend up here. But that was basically the problem was that um, yeah those that NAND gate was um, isolating the data bus from the CPU, my data bus from the CPU. So now now that I've got my PLD doing the um, doing the logic, um, I can switch whether I want. RAM one, two, and three. That additional three K or not? So let's um, let's do let's switch her on and let me show you. Right, <clears throat> I've got the switch off or I've got the switch on. I don't know which way. I've got a, I've got a pull up. I think so. Anyway, let's start recording. So it should be uh, th um, three and a half K. Yep, three and a half K. Um, we can test it by seeing how much. So I've already done this. So the maximum maximum say array I can create is 713 um, whoops 713 integer array so that's okay I'll try to create one larger than that so 7114 we're out of memory all right so 713 was the largest that we could create so let's power off let's uh, flick the switch so to speak just put the header back the header on power back on okay six and a half K so let's see how what bigger array can we do um, 
So 713 was the largest we could do last time. And um, so 714 didn't work. Now 714 works. So the RAM is working. That's how, how the biggest we can do is 1328, I think. 1328. Yep. So that's what just about double what we could do with just 3.5k. And I, I don't think we can go any higher than that. 1329 yeah so that that simple little test there just to you know shows that basic should be able to work with the six and a half k you know the kernel has picked it up so it does seem to be working um let me just stop recording that uh yeah so basically the idea like just to summarize all the work i've done is uh remove the ram remove the sem 4 ls 138 and then just put in my board and well i'm obviously going to redesign it so you don't have all these extra wires you just plug plug into it so i have another daughter board here or perhaps i'll just make, extend this one up a little bit although that means i'm gonna have to get the dummy the tolerances right maybe just a little daughter board that goes in there and then you just take plug the wires in here and plug the wires in there and um flatten them down and away you where you go so I don't know. It's, um, it was a learning exercise for me. I, I understand a lot more how the VIX memory uh, memory works now, um, and I've learned how to program PLDs. And um, like I say the original idea was if there was any faulty RAM, rather than trying to to source the original chips, you could just put in one of these, and it also reduces power consumption as well by. So we're at 840 milliamps now, and we were at just over one amp. So I think we've saved just over 200 milliamps. So if you do that, and then you replace these, and you replace uh, replace the ROMs, and replace the CPU, um, you can save a lot of power. Um, that means that you can use, for example, a smaller uh, plug pack. You know, rather than having to get a plug pack that that um, can handle two amps or one and a half amps, you can get a plug pack that handles, say, 800 milliamps or, or one amp. Obviously, it depends what you want to do if you're running tapes and stuff, but anyway. So, there we go. Hopefully, that was, that was of some interest. Um, yeah, thanks for sticking around. Bye for now.